Will the Montreal Canadiens be going down the route of a rebuild? If so, who are some of the top players that could be moved out first? We also have updates on the Vander Kane situation in San Jose. When could we expect to trade in that front? And there's already as many as eight teams interested in young Bruins forward Jake DeBrus. We have news on a Jack Hughes contract extension with the New Jersey Devils. All kinds of other updates, including news on the waivers, injuries, and more. All that coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of NHL news and rumors to talk about here today. Uh, first up, a quick news item that's actually not NHL related, but connects to a former NHL head coach, and that's Bill Peters. Of course, Bill Peters formerly coached the Carolina Hurricanes and then the Calgary Flames and had to be uh, basically let go or they loved him resign, I guess. Technically is how it ended after all the allegations that came from his time as the AHL coach in the Chicago organization. Uh, of course, he did not end there on a good note. Ended up coaching in the KHL and today he was fired. So obviously that did not last very long. Not sure if he'll get any other opportunities overseas but it's probably fair to say his time in the nhl is over and won't be getting any more chances there uh head coach rod brindamore of the carolina hurricanes has apparently been fined twenty five thousand dollars. i saw reports earlier from Kane's reporter sarah sivian earlier from the athletic saying that uh, brindamore had a conversation with the league and might be getting fined and now we have confirmed it's twenty five thousand after uh, uh, what had happened in the last game i guess he had some unkind things to say i personally didn't catch everything that happened in that game but i know brenda moore obviously was not pleased and uh, crossed the line and gets twenty five thousand dollar fine uh christian willanon finds himself on waivers yet again he is with the buffalo sabers currently i uh, started the year uh, in Los Angeles after being sent there last year via trade from the Ottawa Senators. Never really got a big opportunity in L.A. Uh, ended up getting claimed by Buffalo. Has really barely played there too. Um, and it's just not good. If he can't play in Buffalo, they've had a lot of you know questionable moves on their blue line. Even guys like Will Butcher has kind of fallen out of favor and is once again available. He hasn't really refound his game either. Um, hard to say what happens with Willannon. I think this time he might clear. He's been picked up before, as we know. But hard to say. I mean, well, Lennon had such promise coming out of the U.S. College Hockey, signed with the Senators who drafted him. Uh, obviously, he had a pretty severe injury a couple of years back, and it seems like it's really taken its toll on him here ever since. Um, I wonder if there's any chance with the uh, situation in Ottawa if they take him back. I'm going to guess probably not, but you just never know. The NHL also sent a memo out to all 32 NHL teams, which was reported on earlier by Frank Saravalli of dailyfaceoff.com. Uh, this was basically, I guess you could kind of call it an update to their COVID protocols and COVID updates. Essentially, this memo advises to cancel all holiday parties, any public engagements and events, so they don't want NHL players doing anything basically with the public at all. Um, and they don't want teams holding parties outside of, of, you know, when they're playing. So clearly the, the COVID situation has been a concern. We don't know what that means for the Olympics. Um, there's a lot spreading around. We've seen cases of the AHL Bruins in Providence. They have a bit of an outbreak going on right now. Uh, we also have word that the uh, OHL junior team, the Sudbury Wolves in Canada and Ontario, uh, they're shut down now from the OHL. They have as many as 12 cases on their team. So uh, it's certainly taking its toll around North America. Uh, and there's certainly a lot of implications here if things have to be shut down too long. We've already gone through an extended shutdown before. Leagues want to try their best to avoid that again, given the fact of how much money they lost. So we'll see where this goes. But the NHL is certainly trying to kind of, uh, you know, crack down and eliminate social engagements, I guess, as we get closer to the holiday season. Uh, there was also a small trade today, and I stress really small. Uh, the Ottawa Senators have traded Cole Sherwood, uh, who is an American Hockey League player for them, to the Nashville organization for future considerations. Uh, not quite clear where Nashville will have him report. I would imagine he'll likely go to their American Hockey League affiliate, uh, but Sherwood essentially hadn't been with the Sens for too long, uh, was signed as a uh, unrestricted free agent uh, this past offseason, and now he's on the way to Nashville. A few quick injury updates. Drew Doughty makes his return tonight. Uh, we have Nathan McKinnon returning tomorrow night, so a couple of big names back in NHL action. Uh, we got word from the Senators that Shane Pinto, their young up-and-coming number two center, did indeed have shoulder surgery uh, not long ago and is expected to be out for a significant time. It's a possibility his season's over, but there's also a chance he could return around end of March, 1st of April, maybe get a chance to play the last couple of games before the end of the regular season, which 
which would probably be, be good for him just to kind of get a few reps in, just to kind of confirm that everything's feeling good, so he can head into the summer not having any doubt over what the shoulder is going to feel like once he gets, uh, you know, bumping and playing NHL action again. So we'll see where that goes, but Pinto could be back. He may not. Depends on how the recovery goes. Uh, head coach of the Bruins, Bruce Cassidy, is in COVID protocol, so he will not be available to be on the bench for tonight's game. Of course, they're already without Brad Marchand, serving a three-game suspension uh, for his uh, slew foot against Oliver Ekman Larson in Vancouver. Uh, so that's certainly not good news for the Bruins, who have kind of been up and down lately. And because of that COVID outbreak at their AHL team, even though Jake DeBrusque has requested a trade, uh, many thought that he would possibly might end up sitting out for a while until that comes to be. And they can't because they need him to play because they don't have players that can call up because of the COVID situation. So he's going to continue to play, even though that's been made public. We will touch more on the DeBrusque situation here in just a couple of moments. We also had a huge announcement from New Jersey shortly before I started to record this video. They've extended their young top player, Jack Hughes, to a mega eight-year contract, eight times eight is what he gets, so $64 million over eight years. That's a mega deal for uh, Hughes, who's in the final year of his entry-level contract. Uh, he had his first season, wasn't the greatest. 21 points is what he ended up putting up. Uh, just shy of 60 games. Last year, a uh, similar number of games played, but he improved to 31 points. So it's a step in the right direction. This year, it up to a real good start, but he only played a couple games, then he got hurt, and he's been out since. He's now set back to return uh, as early as today. So, But that's certainly a, a mega contract. This also comes with a, a form of a no-trade clause. He gets a 10-team no list that he can add to this contract in the final four years. So you have to have seven years of NHL service before you can negotiate anything like that into your contract. So the first four years, there is no protection of any kind in that regard. So as far as this deal goes, I mean, I can understand with his potential how this could be a good contract, but it certainly comes with some risk. Uh, we've seen news battle a few injuries already in his young career. Um, and you know, he does have a lot of talent and it looks like it's building and coming out more, but without seeing it, you know, solidified, it's tough, but this is the way the NHL seems to be going. Young players want the money, and they want it up front. It used to be more of a you got paid for your past experience type of league, whereas now you seem to get paid for your potential. Uh, things have really changed a lot in the last even four to five years here. Uh, look at a lot of 29 and 30-year-old unrestricted free agents that would get six, seven, eight-year deals with big money based on what they've done before, uh, whereas now you're seeing that happen at you know 22 21, 23 years old, whatever it is, at the end of their ELC. Now, speaking of Jake DeBrusque, we talked about yesterday that he's formally requested a trade out of Boston. We have reports from a variety of reporters today, including Nick Kiprios and a few others, indicating there appears to be a good amount of interest in the young player so far. And it's only been a day since this was made public. I know Kiprios was reporting there was at least four teams that had made inquiries, and I've seen other reporters say there's already up to seven or eight doing so as well. Those teams appear to include the Flames, the Oilers, the Blues, Carolina Hurricanes, and you have to think the Ottawa Senators are in there as well. Apparently the Senators and the Bruins did engage in trade talks around the breast this past offseason, but things never obviously materialized, never got too far, but there was some conversations. You have to think with their situation uh, being near the bottom of the league still and kind of searching for a few more pieces that he might be an appealing piece that would be something they could take a chance on. Hard to say what the price would be. I'm going to assume that they're probably going to have to sell relatively low given the fact that he struggled a lot the past this year while well, this year and last year really after having a previous 27 goal campaign but if team feels that they can get him back to that 27 goal campaign it's well worth the risk he doesn't have a big contract he's still only 25 years old former first round pick you know i do think there will be uh, no doubt that a deal will come together i would think relatively quick but at this point based on where their season's at i would think the bruins are probably going to want somebody back who can play on the nhl roster i've seen some people suggesting a dylan strome jake debrus swap between the hawks and the bruins you never know that's something that might be discussed but i know strome has certainly been playing more under new head coach Derek king seems to be doing a little bit better getting more playing time and uh, I'm not sure that the Chicago Blackhawks would want to go down that road because they certainly have, I think they have more depth on the wings that they might not have a ton of interest in uh, DeBrusque. And they haven't been mentioned as of yet. That doesn't mean that they couldn't be of interest there. But certainly uh, he needs to play on the left side, ideally. The Bruins have tried playing them on the right. Hasn't really worked out. Clearly he's not a center. So he's a little bit more limited in that regard. So you have to think there's, like I said, there's lots of teams out there with interest. And uh, hard to say what the price ends up being. But a deal shouldn't take too long 
to come together. They really should have traded him a year, year and a half ago when his value would have been much higher, and they've seemed to hold on to him. It's been that relationship that's been like a love-hate thing where he'd get it going for a little bit, get back in the coach's good graces, but it would be a matter of time before he'd be back into Cassidy's doghouse and being a healthy scratch yet again. So it's happened so many times now that it's certainly diminished his value for sure. Uh, when it comes to Evander Kane, Elliot Friedman's reporting that he feels it's most likely going to end up being a three-team trade when the, uh, the winger finally does get moved into San Jose whenever that time comes. Uh, likely going to be a three-team deal where a third team acts as like a broker. He believes there's a decent chance that could be the Arizona Coyotes. Of course, the Coyotes tried to act as a broker on the Jack Eichel trade. Basically, they would retain part of the money in exchange for some extra assets to help them with their rebuild. So essentially, San Jose could retain 50% of that $7 million contract, which knocks the uh, the cap hit down to $3.5 million. The third-party broker team could then retain 50% of the remainder. And then the, uh, the team acquiring Kane would basically... Get him for a quarter of the price. He'd be down to under $2 million. I mean, it would only work out to be $1.75 million. That's really not a lot of money for a guy who could possibly be a 20 to 30 goal scorer. Uh, you know, he's proven time and time again. Now, obviously, he's got his off-ice issues. It'd have to be the right team, the right situation, with the right leadership group who could withstand this. But certainly, uh, if there's a team out there willing to give him that chance, you know, it could pay off. But do they want to take the risk that it's going to ruin their locker room, be a distraction, and, you know, maybe be something else off the ice that could be a problem, right? I mean, you have to think that there's certain teams out there that, you know, he's been linked to Vancouver. I'm not really sure there's much to that. Essentially, what we're led to believe is the Sharks have given his agent, new agent that is, Dan Milstein, permission to speak to teams. So he's been saying he's talking to teams. Doesn't mean that there's trade talks going on. In my opinion, that very well could be more like that the agent's trying to find like ideal landing spots for him and they could talk about it doesn't mean it's going to go anywhere is right so i would caution anybody getting too far on that clearly uh you know there's lots of teams out there that might take the chance but you know would it be like a team like carolina who took a chance on d'angelo could it be a team like florida uh, maybe joe thornton could be like that that third party to kind of bridge that gap bring him in you know they certainly have a lot of leadership there in that area in that team so i don't know that's just a couple of ideas there's certainly no link to any specific teams right now the connects are the only one that's been mentioned in the media but i'm not sure there's much to that Elliot freeman also went on today to say that he wonders if the habs might go a totally different direction here once they get their new gm in place and really go down the route of a rebuild jeff molson's media availability yesterday certainly that was brought up and asked him about the potential for a rebuild after a horrific season and and he didn't really dismiss it at all. He didn't say for sure that's the route that we're going to go, but he said he was not afraid of the word rebuild, and essentially he'll do whatever Jeff Gordon and the new GM um, want to recommend. I mean, he obviously wants to support them, and it's kind of more like their decision, but at the end of the day, he said that the ownership and the fans really should embrace it if that's what they feel the team needs to become the most competitive in the long-term basis. Whatever's best for the long haul is what they're going to do. Uh, there's certainly a lot of talk about which pieces could stay who would go brendan gallagher for example who's been like the team's uh pulse and heartbeat for a long time you would think would be the next future captain if he stuck around uh since shea weber is not expected to play again um he was asked point blank about the potential of a rebuild all he said was he hadn't really thought about it doesn't know if he'd want to stick around or not but you know he's been in the league 10 years he's been uh, trying to win and you know for guys at his age and this stage of his career you can't think that would be overly appealing but you know and you also have to wonder about Carey Price but the whole waving is no move in the offseason uh, you know but possibly going to Seattle and all that you have to think maybe he wanted to go uh, I've often wondered that did Carey Price really hope to get himself to Seattle uh, did he kind of see this team in the direction and maybe want a change for himself and his family of course his wife's from that area it's close to home for him where he's from in bc uh, yeah you really have to wonder i mean they have some long-term big contracts for gallagher and price and petrie and uh you know hoffman's got a few years and to foley josh anderson like who would they end up keeping who would they move uh they have a lot of young pieces but they could certainly uh you know continue to build upon that they have some young players now they still have a good amount of draft picks already going forward and if they sell off some of these vets mostly for picks and prospects you know, they could end up accumulating and stockpiling a lot, but it's going to take some more losing before they get back to the winning. And I just, you know, it might be tough for the fans to accept, 
But at the same time, you have to think it's a real possibility. I mean, uh, we'll see what Jeff Gordon ends up recommending for this team, what route they go in. But at this point, Elliot Friedman really seriously thinks that there's a possibility and a good one at that, that that might be the route they go in. So it's just a matter of time before the rumors start flying about which vets uh, are in, you know, on the outs. And of course, today there was talk around Gallagher where he was brought up and asked a point blank question if he wanted to stick around for a rebuild or not so let me know what your thoughts are if the Habs go to the root of a rebuild who are the most likely players to stick around and which pieces do they try to sell off and get assets for the future let me know your thoughts down in the comments we'll discuss further if you're new to this channel make sure you subscribe and stick around we'll keep you up to date with all the latest news rumors and analysis on all 32 NHL teams thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time